The Volkswagen Beetle is arguably the most influential car ever made. Designed by Ferdinand Porsche, this iconic German classic sold over 21 million units worldwide, and for good reason. Dubbed the people's car, this incredibly affordable and compact bug could haul around the entire family while still maintaining its ability to navigate crowded population centers with ease. This specific Beetle is an impeccably clean example, sporting a fresh coat of Savannah beige paint, a mostly original interior, and the original 1.6-liter air-cooled engine mated to a 4-speed manual transmission. In this Rotorama showcase, we're going to chat with Callie about her Beetle which she nicknamed Gus, and then we're going to take it for a drive to see what it's like stepping back in time and on the accelerator in this gorgeous 1970 Volkswagen Beetle. Hey, I'm Cal, and uh, this is my 1970 Volkswagen Beetle named Gus. So I've had Gus for over a year or so, and uh, previously before this, I had a red 1969 Volkswagen Beetle, which I sold to upgrade to this one. And uh, we went down to Illinois to get it, which was a really fun trip. Um, I will never forget that trip. And um, I went down with my dad, we picked it up, uh, brought it back here. It was running really crappy. Um, I always say it was running really crappy, but it looked really pretty type of thing. So um, we just did, you know, a little restoration on it and she was good to go. It's been the best running bug I've ever had. Back in 1970, um, Gus was originally from Hollywood, which I found out a couple of days ago when I was reading my service records. It was really cool because I never knew this. I always knew that the car was from California, but I just didn't know what city or, you know, even area. So it was kind of cool to read back and uh, it was originally from Sun West Volkswagen uh, down there in Hollywood and uh, I googled it and it's not there anymore, um, unfortunately, but yeah, it was uh, really cool and then uh, it changed hands up until uh, it reached Illinois with uh, another Volkswagen restorer um, up there where I got it. So. So yeah, my um, passion uh, for Volkswagen bugs kind of started when I was in diapers. My dad had them growing up and that's kind of how I learned, you know, to restore them myself and work on them and just do a bunch of, you know, maintenance with him, you know, in the garage when I was this tall, you know, <laughs> which is amazing, you know, to do that with your dad. And I still do that <laughs> to this day. He helps me a lot with Gus. And yeah, I uh, always just loved the look of the car. And um, I always wanted a beige bug like this or like an off-white bug. So it was kind of nice when Gus popped up, you know, I just ended up um, jumping on that because I was like, okay, this is, this is the one I really like. So, <laughs> well, I love this car because it's, just has a bunch of character to it. I mean, if you just take a look at it, you know, it just has so much character and it's just Gus, <laughs> you know, I, I can't really describe it. It's, it's my car. It just, everywhere I go and everything, you know, that I do all the car shows I go to, I think my favorite thing is hearing all the stories and stuff like that of everybody, you know, saying, oh yeah, my dad had a Volkswagen bug or my mom had one or, you know, I went to this car show with my grandpa in a Volkswagen Bug. You know, it's just, it's my favorite thing to hear all those stories. And that kind of makes owning Gus even more special because, you know, they always just light up my, you know, day. It makes my day when that happens. So, yeah, the, I really like just the um, color and the uh, empty wheels on it. Um, that I always wanted a Bug with empty wheels. So when I saw this too, I was like, Okay, that even sealed the deal even more. <laughs> I haven't done too much with Gus uh, when I first got it. Even now, it was just running really crappy, so we got it running better. And it's been the best runner ever since. After that, just a bunch of cosmetic stuff. I haven't really uh, done too much with it. A lot of work was done with it, according to my service records in 2007. So, and it hasn't even been on the road that much since then. So a lot of the parts that they replaced are still pretty new. Um, but yeah, just replacing all, you know, like the gas lines and making sure that it's, you know, safe to be on the road was just our major thing. And that's kind of how it went. <laughs> Everyone always asks me if I'm going to put it on bags. And as much as I want to do that, I might put it on drop spindles, but I don't think I'll go like, fully on bags. 
you know, a little bit more low would be kind of nice. You know, I always like that look on bugs and I have a um, plan. I got all the brackets and stuff. I just got to install them um, for the pop out windows in the back, which is like my favorite thing um, on bugs. But this one didn't come out with pop out windows. So um, yeah, other than that, I guess is pretty much a done restoration. Just the maintenance stuff, like I said, I'll just keep up with and you know the oil changes and stuff and actually um i'm rebuilding an engine right now too um it's a 1500 single port it's a little smaller than mine but it sounds pretty gnarly so i might pop that in there for a while too and uh we'll go from there but i'm not in a rush to do it well anything else you want to talk about or do you want to take it for a ride let's take it for a ride awesome. <laughs> so i've got to be honest i've never actually ridden in an old volkswagen beetle before yeah i've driven <laughs> the new ones uh, but I've just never had the opportunity to be in one like this. Yeah, I know. It's uh, definitely a different experience. It's a lot smaller than all of our normal cars we got around today, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it definitely has a lot of pickup for 57 horsepower. <laughs> right. So 57 horsepower, is that the original motor in there or is that... Uh, something that somebody replaced at some point. Yep, that's the original motor in the back um, that you can definitely tell has all of the um, different uh, like California emissions stuff. You can, like with the oil bath, the oil bath looks different um, sure. than everything uh, that would come on a standard Beetle, you know, like from Wisconsin. The, if you look at my other engine, it looks completely different pretty much. Sure. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, so it's, it's really interesting though, being in an older small car like this is, today's smaller cars are still so much bigger than what yesterday's small cars are because right. of you know, the, all the safety standards that they have nowadays. And this is almost really just intriguing how it's just a bit, it's, it's, you wouldn't expect it from a car with 57 horsepower and this small, but it's such a visceral feeling where you kind of just, I'm guessing you as the driver, you feel a little bit more connected to the machine, but also connected to the road. Yeah. Because there's really not much between you and the road itself right. when it comes to mechanical stuff holding you back. Yeah, it's a uh, bare bones simple. It's uh, about the simplest you can get to, you know, it's easy to work on, easy to fix. It's just an amazing little car. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, for how small it is, but you know, the front end, you have a ton of space up there. I know you have a bunch of, you know, all your <laughs> yeah. spare stuff up there with your, your wheel and, you know, tarp and everything, but there's a lot of space up front. And then the, the engine compartment out back for being air-cooled, you know, that's that's a small compartment. It's kind of squeezed right in there. Yeah, it is pretty squeezed in there. There isn't really much room to work, you know. You basically got to, you know, take out the engine when you want to do the back of the engine stuff. You can't really reach up into there like a normal car. And um, it only has three bolts connecting the, or four bolts, sorry, uh, connecting the engine to the transmission. So huh. it's really easy to pop the engine out. It takes like an hour. <laughs> sure. Yeah, definitely easier compared to nowadays cars. That's for sure. So what is the longest you've ever taken a trip in this car? Um, I did a rally about, I think in April, um, and I went about 150 miles. Okay. Um, so it, it goes for a long time, you know, when the engine is properly hooked up with all the um, air cool components, you know, it's better to have heater channels in it just so the engine runs a lot better. Um, it, it really doesn't overheat too much. Watch, I'll say that now overheat, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it, it runs really good. And you can tell it's a California car too, because it, it kind of thrives for the heat. I don't know why we had it at a car show and we were sitting there in line waiting to get in for like a good solid half hour. And the bug was just living for it. <laughs> it sure. Just kind of sat there just happily idling. And some people with other bugs can't really say that either. Cause <laughs> they don't, they probably overheat, you know. But right. My old one had a really bad old overheating problem. Uh, the new owner fixed it, but and it looks really nice now. But yeah, the old uh, 
the old one definitely if you were sitting in traffic it was getting kind of dicey there <laughs> for sure. a little bit well and that's the interesting thing too that you brought up with the whole like car show thing is a lot of the american cars um, that have radiators and that have cooling systems, they still overheat like crazy when they're just right. idled or, you know, moving around a car lot nice and slow. Right. Um, and, and for an air-cooled car to just be like, okay, well, hey, you know, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a little messed up on that shift because I'm talking, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun little car and it's really nice to uh, be able to call it my own too, you know? Right. Do you want to take it for a ride? There's a good uh, stopping point here. Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. Check it out, see what it's like. Yeah, there's nobody behind us. We'll get through this crappy patch. And... Sure. Kind of ride's kind of rough, but <laughs> you get used to it after yeah. a while. But for a small car like this and how old it is, I mean, that's to be expected. You know, nobody right. buys a car like this saying, oh, this is going to be like a Cadillac or, you know, a Lexus. It's, you kind of. Sorry. No, you're good. You kind of know what you're getting, and that's, uh, that's the cool part is people who own these cars are typically okay with that. Right. Yeah, I'd love to try it yeah. out. First bit of business, how do I put the seat backwards? So there's a little lever right here. You see it? Oh yeah, yeah. right here. Yep. Okay. So just yeah, it. you're going to need probably all the way back to... You just... There you go. There we go. Anything that I should know about it before I... Nope, it's right, pretty... It just drives like a regular manual? It literally just drives like a regular manual. Cool. You only got four gears, so... Alright. You're in Brakes, neutral now. clutch. Yep. Alright. Yep. Brakes down. Yep. There you go, Ooh. you're ready. You're in the hot seat now. Up here. Where's it going to go? There you go. There you go. There you go. You got Bring it. Bring her out. There we go. There you go. That is a weird clutch. Isn't it weird? So the gas pedal is what's tripping me up is because I can't yeah. feel it through my shoe. It's really hard to um, there we go. wear big boots, especially like during the fall, you know, when I drive right. it to put it in storage, you, you got to wear small shoes because it's just like it's hard to drive with big boots. Right. Yeah, usually I'll wear something like a, uh, like a skate there shoe yep. so I can feel it a little bit more, but that is a weird pedal. <laughs> yeah. I won't lie. <laughs> Awesome. Sorry, Clutch. <laughs> but we've got it now. Well, that's the other thing too, though, is you know I'm used to you know Clutch pedal going all the way to the floor before you do anything. Right. And that seems like it catches like it, it's like yeah. the halfway point, so it's kind of like. Watch out, Burb. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's from LA, and the clutch is kind of shot. I gotta replace it here in a couple years, but. For sure. For it to be one of my first manual cars, too, you know. Right. Well, it's nice to learn on something that's yeah. a little wonky. Yeah. Because then when you get into something that isn't wonky, right. you have a little bit more appreciation for it. Right. Wow, this is a different experience. <laughs> I mean, the, the steering wheel is so thin. So this isn't the steering wheel that came with the car, right? No, nope, that's original. Too. This is? Yeah, it's okay. even got a horn right here. Oh, sure. <laughs> so you just press that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That is so cool. Yeah, um, this was, I believe, the, I can't remember if it was the 71 or 72s um, that uh, was the last year for this style of steering wheel, and then they switched over to the bigger ones. Sure. All right, which way do you want me to go, left or right? Um, we'll go right. And then this is the corner that I started on fire in my old bug sitting there crying and I found a, a beer can on the side of the road and there was a puddle right there and I was shoveling puddle water on it while I was crying. <laughs> Alright, we're going to give this a shot again. There you go. There we go. It's just like I said, that gas pedal so light. Yep. <laughs> screaming while doing it at you, but that is a big hawk. That is a big hawk, yeah. It's got something to it. Is it a mold or something? Yeah, well this is 
This is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, it's just cool because A, it's just so different than any other car out there. Right. But there's a reason why this is, you know, the most popular car of all time. I mean, they've been producing, well, I think in Mexico, when did they stop producing this chassis? Uh, it was like uh, only a handful of years ago that they were still producing these things. I can't remember if it was 1990 or 2000. I know that, um, I think it was 2000 because they had uh, modern radios in it. Sure. Um, Right, but and to be have been in production since 19 what 39 or was it the 40s? Uh, 1939, I believe, was the first year that they trial run it. Uh, the Beetle didn't come to um, uh, America. Let's do right. Sorry, we're talking. In. <laughs> the Beetle didn't come to America until like the 1940s, late 1940s, and they were never accepted. Uh, just because, you know, World War II and everything. So right. They got kind of a grim history, but it was kind of nice that it turned around to be the love bug, you know. Right. Remarketing at its finest. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that was that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Definitely an interesting ride. <laughs> All there right. you go. Sweet. Well, that was super awesome. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for letting me borrow your time and your car <laughs> for an awesome video. Um, super seriously awesome. Um, before we end, though, is there anything you want to give a shout out to? Instagrams, Facebooks, pages, anything like that? or? Yeah, for sure. I mean, pretty much on all social media, TikTok, um, Instagram, everything. I'm that beetle babe, all one word. For so. sure. And I'll take that in the description on the video. Awesome. Sounds so. good. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, video was definitely something new that we're trying out here with a bunch of old vintage cars or just any cool cars. So if you really like the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Please press the like button if you liked it. If you disliked it, leave me a comment. Let me know what I can do better next time. And I guess we'll see you next time on Rotorama's, what are we going to call this? Car, like showcase cars? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We'll come up with a name for it later, but we'll see you guys next time. Peace, guys. <laughs>